Hey guys, my name is Jennifer and I am Genevieve Designs. Today we are going to start a brand new album. This one is the Basically Amazing Foundations Printable Scrapbook Album Templates and it's going to be a size B, but we're going to be using this paper collection. It's called Gingham Gardens by My Mind's Eye and I have a video showing you um, exactly what I purchased for this. I will link that up here and down below. I'm pretty sure it's what's next or something. It's called something like that. But it shows you uh, what we're going to be using in this album series, what we used in the last album series, and what we're going to be using after this album series. So, but for this album series, we're going to be using the Gingham Gardens, and today's video is going to be on the covers. Okay, so this is the last album that we made. We made a five-part video series, and this one is called Pastel Floral, and it's using a printable set, well, two sets of printable background designs, um, but I will list this playlist. I will link it up here, and I will link it down below in the description box, but this is the last one we made, and this is also a B-size album, so we're getting ready to make the exact same size album as we did in this one, except it's going to be a little bit more uh, modern, a little bit more jazzed up, a little bit more uh, interactive. So in this series, I kept it pretty plain. We've just got a lot of pages with a lot of photos. So this would be considered a photo, not just a blank, you know, card that says four by six. Then I also showed you how to add this tissue in between the pages to protect the photos. If you want to check that out, this is the last album that we made, and again, this one is the Basically Amazing Size B, and it's called Pastel Florals. Alright, so we are going to be using a couple different sets of templates from the Basically Amazing Foundations, and those are going to be the, patch, the Patchwork set of templates and the Buffalo Check set of templates. They each come with a free set of plain and a guide, but if you wanted to get both, um, you don't have to download the both of the plain and both of the guide because they're the same. They don't come separately, but uh, these are the two background designs we are going to be using, Patchwork and Buffalo Chuck, and they go perfectly with the um, Gingham Gardens. So, this album is going to be called the Gingham Gardens, basically amazing, just so you know. Um, it will be, the playlist will be called that, and then the Amazon list will also have a special Amazon list specifically for this album series. It's all linked down below, and it will also be called the Gingham Gardens. But we're going to be using those two background designs. You don't have to use both of those. You can just use one or neither. It doesn't matter. Whatever you want to do. And then we're also going to be using several different shades from the Shades of Color. I will have all of these things linked specifically, but down below for you if you want to check it out. And then, of course, I'm going to be using my coffee tea dyed paper. So I just wanted to make sure I said that. All of that will be linked in the description box below this video. So... Again, I'm making another album cover video because I'm going to make this album. Let me grab it really fast so I can show you. I'm going to be making this size, B-size album, the covers, like we did this uh, cover right here. So this is a thick acetate cover. So this is the glassine bag. This is the Midnight Garden glassine bag album. Um, I have a whole video series on this album too. If you want to check this one out, this was so much fun. I loved 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 making this one i'll have a link up here and down below if you want to check it out but i wanted to do another clear thick acetate cover or craft plastic whatever you want to call it so that's kind of what i'm going for for this cover for this album so i just kind of wanted to give you a heads up of where we're going with this cover so i've already prepped some things we're not going to be using fabric for the spine this time we did that in the last album series, the pastel floral um, album that we made. I used fabric instead of Tyvek, so this time we're using Tyvek. But what we're going to need for the covers is um, page 2B, They're, the mat for that is on there. Page 2B is the cover, the template for the cover for this size album, so you need to trace this out, this out one time onto this is a medium weight chipboard and I finally got my order of medium weight chipboard. I have it linked in my Amazon. Medium weight chipboard which I've already traced and cut down to size. So you need one of these and then for this album I was debating going back and forth but I think we're going to use the the uh, four page 
spine, which is this one. So I traced this right, right next to that. So this one's made out of chipboard as well. So I've got the four page, um, the four page spine. And then I've cut two of the, these were, I think these are 11 by 17. Let me grab one. Yeah, 11 by 17, uh, regular copy paper. There's nothing thick about it, it's just regular copy paper. I've been doing all of my covers for the Basically Amazing. I've been doing them the exact same way or using the exact same paper just because I think it's cool to like take the same idea and use it over and over and over again and come out with a different result every time. I just think it's really, really cool. Uh, so anyway, so I had, I cut two sheets left. This is paper that I copy tea stained. I have two sheets of these that I cut down to be, let's see. So this, no, this is the 11 inch side and this is the 17. So I cut the 17 inch side down to 12 inch. So I have two of those. By the way, I have a link down below to Etsy if you don't want to do your own coffee tea staining paper. Um, I don't know if they'll do custom sizes for you, but I'll have a link down there below where you can purchase some coffee tea stain paper from Etsy. Lots of great sellers sell it. Um, I don't sell it, it's not my shop. I don't know any of them personally. I just um, know that you can purchase it from Etsy and maybe you can get a special, you know, the special sizes or maybe 12 by 12 even. I don't know. So maybe you can find out because you need just a little bit bigger because these covers are really big. So also if you don't want to use coffee tea, uh, tea stain paper, you can use like 12 by 12 cardstock. Totally fine. Okay, so I've cut two of those down because one of them we're going to wrap. The, this is the back cover. So we're going to wrap the back cover with one and then we're gonna use this piece to wrap the spine, um, but we're gonna to have to hold off on that just a little bit, I think. Let me see, let me wrap my head around what I'm doing here. Okay, so I need to, because I'm using paper, I need to cover the whole piece of chipboard with tape so that the whole thing is smooth. And then I've got two pieces of Tyvek here. This is, that material that you can't rip. Um, you can also use fabric if you want to. So this is a 12 inch piece and I believe this is four and a quarter inch wide and then this is a 10 inch piece tall and four and a quarter inch wide. So this is for the inside and this is for the outside. So we're gonna have to put tape on this, put tape on this. Let's see. All right, so I grabbed some of the scrapbook.com. I'm going to put, I'm going to cover this whole side here with a sheet of adhesive. You could use the roll. This is a four inch roll. You could do that if you want, but since I have these sheets, I'm going to use these. I might even use some of these pieces from the last uh, album that we did. I'm going to grab that sheet because I might need it. I also need to get my craft mat. Okay. Trying to get situated here. It's been a while since I've recorded, you guys. It's we're in the middle of the um, the uh, pandemic. So we're not in the middle. It we're, uh, yeah, I guess we're kind of in the middle. <laughs> Duh. Um. I'm gonna remove the backing off of this sheet here, and I think I'm gonna lay this down. And yeah, I'm gonna have to do it this way cover the whole entire piece of chipboard. This is medium weight chipboard or 30 point chipboard. Okay, I didn't I didn't get it spot on. That's okay. Okay, I think I'm gonna double cut this bottom one first. This is just a craft knife. This is a Scotch craft knife. But anyway, I haven't recorded in a while because I was working on my my last video series that you just finished watching. I was working on that to get it all prepped and ready because uh, I knew the kids were going to be off school and lots of people are having to stay home and, you know, being quarantined or businesses have closed down or whatever the reason may be for the pandemic, the, the virus that's going around. So anyway, so I haven't been recording. My son is home, so that makes it tough. 
I still have been keeping my granddaughter uh, a couple days a week because luckily where her mom and daddy work, my son and daughter-in-law, they're not around a bunch of people, so that's good. So they can still work for now. All right, I'm gonna burnish this whole side. Now, if you weren't using paper, you could literally just use glue. Not a big deal. Use whatever you have, use whatever you want. But I like using this because the coffee stain paper, it's wrinkly and I like that. That's one of the things I like about it. But it also, I want it to be completely, I want it to have complete coverage um, onto the paper, the chipboard onto the paper. Then I also want to cover this whole piece. Maybe I can use some of these leftover bits. I'll just use the one that I just had. And cover this. I need to just cover one side for now. We need to cover both of these pieces with tape. And I think I'm going to try using this four inch roll, even though it is bigger. We can just add a little bit, I think. All right, so let's go ahead and start covering the pieces. So I'm going to start with the cover, or the back cover. Oh, you know what else I need? Oh, we'll get to that in a minute. I'm going to start with this back cover. And yep. I'm going to remove the backing. Oh, look what I did to my little, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it, my little sticky piercer thingy. I bent it accidentally. I was uh, making something, a, a book for my car, and I'm not sure what happened, but I somehow bent to the end of that needle. So, yeah, yep, yep, yep. Okay, so on the 12 inch side here, I'm just gonna lay it down on the edge, like that, and I'm gonna go ahead and cut this off over here on this side. I'm going to leave about an inch, maybe I'm going to leave about three-fourths of an inch. No, let's leave an inch. Might as well give myself a little extra wiggle room. All right, let's set that aside. Then you want to flip that over. And you want to burnish that really good. And then you want to take a stylist, a stylus, not st stylus. And I'm just going to score right there next to the chipboard. And then I'm going to prep these folds. I bet you, I tell you what, you guys, I know I sound terrible once again, and it's a terrible time, but it's like the time I always have allergy attacks. And I, I tell you what, People probably think that I am being irresponsible, <laughs> but I am not. It's just allergies, I promise. I don't have a fever or anything. But anyway, it's just a terrible time to have allergies. <laughs> so any of you who have allergies, you know what I'm talking about. All right, so then we want to add some tape. And I'm pretty sure that I'm gonna have to use 
This is 3 8 inch tape. This one is linked in the Amazon list. I'm going to go around the edges. of the paper going past that fold score mark that we made there because we're going to chop the edges off Good burnish. Now this this is a uh, Teflon. Uh, it's bone folder, I guess, a Teflon bone folder. My son was using it last night. Um, you can use it the same as you would use a bone folder or a stylus. You could do this because of the edge. But anyway, he had it out sitting here on my table, so I've been using it. <laughs> I've been using it a lot. And then let's put some quarter of an inch tape. This one is from scrapbook.com along the chipboard edge. Like this. We're going to cut these corners so there's like a little X here and then you just want to kind of go straight through that X like that and I like to do the top and bottom and then the sides last I don't know why that's just the way I like to do it so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to remove the tape backing off of here, and then before I can get that, I cannot believe I did that. I did not know it would bend that easy. Before I fold it over, I'm going to add some Fabri-Tac by Beacon. I'm going to add it right here along this edge so that it gets a good uh, contact. The paper and chipboard get good contact together. Just like that. And then I'm going to fold it over. And I'm going to burnish. It just gives it a nice clean edge over there. Same thing over here. Move the tape backing. That has just got me so bothered. I can't even. I can't. So this is a We Are Memory Keepers sticky piercer, I think is what it's called, but I, I messed up the piercer part. <laughs> Very sad. Also, on another note, I have two boo-boos on my hand. One, this not giant bruise right here, and this over here. This was from cooking. I burnt myself on a cast iron skillet. And then this is because I've been rearranging. We're making our granddaughter a baby room. And so we're getting rid of our guest room. And I have another workspace that's up here um, in my upstairs. Because my, my space I'm in right now my, is my loft. And that's, I call it my studio. Um, but anyway, so I have another workspace, and you guys have seen it. I think I've showed it in a, tu a studio tour a couple years back, a year or so back, something. Well, I'm removing that space into the guest room, and then I'm taking the space that I was using uh, for my work, and I'm turning that into her room. It's already girly, and it's really pretty. And um, But anyway, so I'm moving heavy things, going through things, seeing what I need and don't need. Uh, getting rid of stuff, that kind of stuff. I think I'm going to add just a little bit of glue right there. 
did I put this? No. I put this on wrong for a second. So that's why I look kind of like I've my hands have seen better days. But that's what I've been doing. So then I'm going to take this bone folder and I'm going to do the edge again all the way around. And so there is the back cover is all wrapped nice and neat with coffee stained paper. Okay, here's the spine. And then here is the tie back. I'm feeling like uh, I'm thinking I'm going to wrap the spine again with paper when I am finished here. That's what I think I'm going to do. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove shoot I was thinking I was going to put I think I was thinking I was going to put paper on the back side of here. All right, so I grabbed my other piece. I think I think I want to add this on here. I'm going to add it to this paper here. Do I have the right side? Yes. So this is the 12 inch length. I'm thinking it through. I'm trying to figure, I thought, I thought I had how I wanted to do this in my brain, but then I am, um, I'm not, no, I don't know. Okay. I don't know if it's going to work. I guess the worst case scenario is that I have to start over, right? So we're probably, hopefully we won't have to do that. All right. So I'm just going to take this and it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm going to come over about a quarter of an inch from the edge there. A quarter of an inch. That's more like three eighths of an inch. From the edge, I'm going to burnish that into place. And I think what's going to end up happening is I'm going to add this cover here. Maybe about three-fourths of an inch away. Like this. Let's do it like this. Because I'm going to have a clear cover on one end, I, I need to work this out now. So, I'm going to mark it three-fourths of an inch away from here. So I'm just using my ruler. And I'm going to use a marker. So this is where the cover is going to go. And then I'm going to skip a quarter of an inch from there. I'm going to put my ruler right on that quarter of an inch. Oops. Mark a line. And then this is where the spine is going to go. So we're going to skip this part. Okay. So let's put the cover on. Let's add some tape to the cover. And I'm going to grab the. And you want the raw edge. You want the one that you did not wrap. I'm going to put tape on the outside here. And I'm going to put tape on this outside here. Let's see. 
I'm just laying this on here to, to see where I need to start and stop with my tape. You don't need to go all the way to the edges right now. So, put a piece of tape there. And then that should, that should be there. Okay, so let's add this on. Let's burnish first and then add. Remove the backing off of this piece. Well, let's move. Can you believe I did that? That is just so disappointing. I can't even like. Uh, I can't do anything. Maybe my husband will fix it. I can't get the. I can't get up under that tape backing. It's just the whole point for me having it. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna line this up onto that line and yes I am leaving a very generous quarter of an inch. Lay that down like that. Put this over and burnish. Okay. And then the spine piece is gonna go right here. So I'm gonna add, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and add that. Remove the backing. This might take a minute now that I've got a messed up tool. Okay, I removed the tape backing. I think I'm gonna get my ruler so I can keep this somewhat straight. I'm gonna lay this on here. Like that. Flip this around. And burnish that down really good. lay this back down on here and I'm going to draw a quarter of an inch from that edge. And then I'm going to get my templates back out because I want to use the two inch spine piece as kind of like a uh, this is so I can mat it, if that makes sense. So what I want to do, lay this on here. Well, I'm just going to have to. Lay this on here. I'm going to mark it. I probably don't need my Sharpie. Mark it with my pencil. So that way I can mat it with this little piece there. And I'm gonna cut this edge, or should I rip it? Should I cut it, should I rip it? What do you think? Okay, so the next thing I need is the craft plastic, the clear craft, pla <laughs> clear craft plastic. This is 0 .020 clear craft plastic. It's thicker, it's a lot thicker, and there's a protective coating on here that you peel off, but I'll have this linked in my Amazon. This is 12 by 12 sheets, and I'm pretty sure, how many do you get? I don't know how many you get. 25? Wow, 25, that's how much I've used it. 25 in a package and there's only a few left. But anyway, I've already cut it down. You can cut it on your paper trimmer, you can cut it in, you know, it's really easy. You can cut it with your craft knife, 
super, 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 super easy. So I'm going to remove the protective coating off of one side really fast. Because I'm going to need to put some tape. All right. Sorry about the sorry about the glare. How can I? There we go. So on this one side, I'm going to run some tape along this edge, this very edge, tippy 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 top. I think did I put it on the wrong side? No, I'm going on the right one. I'm going to run it along that edge, and then on this paper. We're going to run, let's see, well, let's, we should have maybe done two. No, let's do the one inch tape on this one. And we're going to use my new special tool from Pat. And let's put it, we're going to come a little bit, a bit away from there, just in case we want to add something underneath, tuck something underneath there. So this is one inch tape. You could just use several lengths or yeah, several strips of any size that you have. Since I have it, that's what I'm using. So we got one inch tape there. We've got the three eighths inch tape here. And let's attach it. Remove the backing. I hope this works out. I love the glassine bag one. I think it's super, super, super cute. So I'm hoping this one works out just the same. I'm just making sure that I did pick the right side. Yes. So this is not as flimsy as transparencies. So that's nice. It's thicker and holds up really nice. So I'm going to hold it up at an angle. I'm going to try to I'll line it up at that edge. I probably didn't need a quarter of an inch on this side, but we're going with it. And we're going to press down. So we have something that looks like this so far. That's going to look so cool. <laughs> okay. All right. So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to take this off the back, the plastic off the back of this, the plastic covering, the plastic sheet. Now it's really going to give a glare. Wonderful. And then I think I'm going to add this into here before we wrap the edges. I think that's what I'm going to do. But before I do that, I'm going to burnish these grooves here. like that. And then I think I'll start by applying it to the side. So I think I'm going to do just a little bit at a time. I'm just going to remove the backing. This probably wasn't the best way to do this. I don't know what that was, but my computer is talking. This is just annoying. I'm going to have to get that fixed. I can't take it.
So I'm just going to remove just a little bit of the backing. Just enough so that I can tack it down. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I'm trying to match it up since they're both the same width. And I'm going to move just a little bit at a time. And burnish it into the grooves there. Taking my time, I'm just gonna work this onto the chipboard spine there. And I, I came to the next little groove, so I'm just gonna have to take, whoa, it's a little too much came off of that one. Ah. Let's take this last little bit. I can't take it anymore. Where's that other tool? At least this one has a point on it. I can get under there. Sorry about the glare, you guys. There's not a whole lot I'm going to be able to do about it. I guess I'm going to have to protect um, Yeah, this way it's really good and flexible. You could even fold it like this. You could flip it the other way and fold it like this. The cover remains super, 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 super flexible. And that's what I like about it. All right. <clears throat> now I'm going to take some tape. I'm going to fold it over. I'm going to put some on this part here. Some here. And I think I'm gonna run just one more in the middle there, just to be safe. Do that to the top and the bottom. backing off of these you know what I forgot to do not to scope just a little bit of fiber tuck right along that edge there.
fold it over, burnish it into place. Oops. These album covers are so big, it's hard for them to fit under my tripod. But it is what it is. Okay, so there is one end. And let's do the other end. Yeah, again, sorry about the glue. So this is what we have now. So awesome. All right. Instead of, I usually leave the covers blank until I know um, what I'm going to do to the inside cover, but I think I'm going to cover this whole inside. This whole inside with a sheet. So we are going to need at least, let's see, we're going to need 11 and 3 fourths. No, 11 and 7 eighths. So this way, we're going to need 11 and 7 eighths. And then we're going to have the, I'll just go ahead and give you the measurement. We're going to have the 10 inch, 10 inch tall this way. Just because it's a special cut. Let's just do it that way. So this will be a 10 inch. Let me grab another sheet of paper. All right, I got my paper trimmer out. And so we're going to need the 11 and 7 eighths. So we're going to put the long inch size. So if you have a 12 by 12, just take a 12 by 12. And cut, actually I like this side better. So 11 and 7 eighths. Actually, I'm think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna rip it. I've never done it on the on the cutting board before, but let's give it a whirl and see what happens. I wanted to match that front side there, so one end one end could be straight, and the other one I wanted to match. Well, look up there. 11 and 7 eighths and then 10 inches. Let's do it this way. And I might cut each end off because each end is kind of curled. So let's do half inch strips. So I'm going to cut it 10 and a half and then 10. So then, let's bring this whole thing back over. Then this whole thing should cover this whole thing. And it does. Wonderful. All right. Oh, I'm gonna get another sheet of this. It might be the last, yep, it's the last one in this package. So I'm gonna cover Trying to figure out the best way to do this here. I don't need that, I need this. I do it this way. Burnish that down so that way nothing goes to waste on this. Oh, 
And then I'm going to start at this end here. I'm going to remove the paper backing. And I'm going to pull my cover over. And I'm going to line this up along that edge there so it shares the same cut edge or ripped edge I'm sorry same ripped edge okay <clears throat> and it doesn't have to be 100% perfect because this is kind of just like a base layer so don't sweat the small stuff all the way around and I'm going to work it up to the spine, edge of that spine there really fast. Burnish that down really good. Then we're going to go a little further. Until we reach the next edge, which is right here. Merge that down really good. Then we should be able to remove the backing, the rest of the backing off. And there we go inside and out is now covered this is amazing all right so the last thing we're going to do in this video is we're going to do the binding strips so the only thing i think i'm going to do the only thing i know for sure for sure is that i need the four page binding i printed off page six when you print off the plain templates it does not have all of this writing or the color on there it's just a full sheet and I've already started to trim it down, so it actually looks like this. So I've already trimmed it down. So this piece and this piece here are the four main pages. And then all of these are kind of like add-on pages. So I'm going to, I think I'm going to put this in my workstation. Because I might add on some pages. But for now, I know I'm going to be using four. For sure. This is a big, that's a thick it's a thick spine, so we might end up adding more pages. But for now, this is what I have. So I need the scoreboard, and we're going to score the four score marks right there next to the fins. This is a We Are Memory Keepers scoreboard, and this is a Teflon pencil stylus or whatever you want to call it and then let's prep these by folding them one way and then folding them back on themselves like this it's like what am I doing Oops, I kind of moved my my number out of the way. My number, my letter out of the way. All right, so on the back side, I'm going to add some tape. And I think I could do, I could do an inch and I could do a three-eighths on this large one. So I'm going to do that first. I'm going to add this to the main part here, right up next to the score mark, not going over the bump.
But before we go on, let's ink the edges. This is Distress Oxide Walnut Stain. There we go. And a ink blending tool. And I'm going to get the edges, the top and bottom edges. And I'm going to flip it over and get where we scored. I'm going to get that edge because you'll probably be able to see that. You won't be able to see this side, this other side, but you will be able to see right next to that tape, you'll be able to see that when you flip pages. So we're going to do that to both of these pieces. Since one side already has ink on it, you don't have to worry about ink on that side, just the top and the bottom. Okay, let's first start. I'm going to attach this one on top of this one. So this is the this is the binding that is the Laura Dennison Stack the Deck binding. And she has an original video. I will link it uh, down below in the description box. For this, um, if you want to see how she came up with it and how she does it. And so then you just literally lay these on top. Well, maybe. Oh, I was going to add some glue. Uh, oh, well. Maybe we'll add it to the back the bottom before we add it to the cover. And it should fit literally right inside that space there. And it should be perfect. And then burnish that down. And then we're going to add this into the cover. So it's going to go right here. And it should fit, if you leave it flat like that, it should fit right in that space perfectly. Let's take the backing off of this. And then I am going to add some liquid glue so that it, paper to paper contact will be perfect. It will not come apart. And this is art glitter glue. And I'm just going to add some around the edge like this maybe a little bit in the middle. Well, and I'm going to spread it out just a little. Don't go past the bumps though. You certainly do not want to glue your fins down. So I'm going to flip this over, I'm going to lay this right in the middle. There should be about an eighth of an inch top and bottom. Should fit perfectly onto that spine. I'm going to give it a good burnish. Maybe we'll fold those up as we burnish so we don't accidentally glue our fins down. Burnish, burnish. See, I've got some seepage right there. That's okay. Oh, my poor son's sneezing. I hear him. He's got allergies too. Bless his heart. Mama, mama, he inherited mama's allergies. Okay. So now we have four fins to start with in our new album. So we have the cool, thick, craft plastic covers, and then we have the four-page binding in place. But again, we can add up to one, two, three, four, five more fins to make it a total of nine pages or nine fins. So we'll just have to see. We'll just have to play it by ear and see how it goes. Okay, you guys, that is all I have for this video. I'm super excited about starting this new album. Um, I love the paper. I think it's going to be fun. I think it's going to turn out beautiful. And I love the style cover. And do let me know what you guys think. Be sure to give me a thumbs up if you like the video. Be sure to subscribe to my channel if you want to follow along with this series. I'm sure there will be many videos um, on this album alone. I'll take you step by step. We'll go page by page. Um, and you can either follow along right along with me. Or you can take the ideas and interpret that in your own album any way you want to however you want to do it, but we will go step by step and I will show you how to make a 
scrapbook album from scratch, start to finish. So I will see you guys next time. Bye.